need your prayers this morning. Thankful to get to be here today and first time I've ever made it this way and couldn't help but think what a pretty church that you guys have here. Yeah, we're blessed. What a good tool that you have. To be able to have a building, it's God's not in these sticks and stones. But what you have is a great instrument that you can call your loved ones. And you can call your friends out. And you can tell them about the best thing I hope that's ever happened to you. Just a young man and born and raised in Michigan and started preaching there. And been preaching in Kentucky for about eight years. And found that God, he didn't live in Michigan. But I found him there. Found that when I moved to Kentucky, he didn't just live there. But he went with me wherever I went to. It's not about this building right here. It's not about religion today. Wars and everything are fought over religion. But what I hope that I can stress to you, it's not about religion, but it is about salvation today. I didn't find God that... Didn't find them just the way that my grandparents found them. Didn't find them just the way that my parents found them. But I did find them down upon my knees, humbling my heart. I don't know what the case will be with me. I don't know just where you're at in your life today. Or just what you stand in need of. But I do have a Father that's in heaven that understands your very needs today. The Bible, it says like this, it says that blessed are those that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled, brother. I used to think about when I was a sinner, and I used to think about that Scripture and think how that the sinner, man and woman, they better get hungry and they better get thirsty today. It's not that complicated. I'm gonna. I'm not preaching a complicated God to you today. And guess what? Man complicates many things, but my God, he he sets things out very simple and very plain. And you know that I used to look at that scripture. That blessed are those that do hunger and thirst after righteousness; they shall be filled. And look at the poor sinner man and woman today. But guess what? I'm ten years into the church. I began to look at that scripture, and I thought. I looked at myself and I said, how come sometimes I leave the church? And someone would call me and I didn't make the meeting. And they would say, well, how was church today? And sometimes, Brother Elisha, I would say we had a good meeting. But other times I'd say it was just okay. Another, and I began to think about when I was hungry. And I was thirsty and I was seeking after God with everything that was in me. Yes, 
this one. And he said, this water, if you if you draw of it and you drink, he said, you're going to get thirsty again. He said, but I'm offering you water that if you would drink. He said, it would be like a well springing up unto you unto everlasting life. This water, I'm brother, and I love how this woman put it. Guess what? I don't know where you are today. But I know a man who spoke to a woman one time. I'm brother, and she went back to her little village and she began to speak to Good girl. 
ground. It said some brought forth thirtyfold, some brought forth sixty. Guess what? Thank God for the sowers. Thank God for the mercy of God's children that, brother, and that they don't get tired sometimes. Because guess what? We can be awful hateful, brother, and we can do a awful lot of bad things. But guess what? Thank God the sower kept sowing. Because guess what? I have stories for each one of those times. Guess what? It fell among my stony heart many a times. I let the I let the fall swoop and seal every every bit of God's blessing away. But guess what? One day in my life, I begin to look a little different. I like that old parable, son. I'm brother, and I came back into my right mind, and I begin to think about what I, what I had heard back when I was a young child. When when life beats you up sometimes. We think that we know a whole lot. At 16, I thought that mom and dad didn't know a whole lot. And I thought I was wiser, and I thought I'd go out and I'll, I'll leave home and I'll just live just wherever I could. That's right, come on, preach it. And I stayed just out on the streets, just outside of Detroit, just living just wherever I could. Staying with friends until those friends' parents said, you gotta go. And I tried to find some more. And brother, and it was like a haunting kept following me. Every time I got comfortable, the words, Mike, it's not you, but we don't have any more room for you. There were several of us just living out wherever we could. And brother, in the backpack was the only home that I knew for several years. And brother, and guess what? I ran just as far as I could in my family. Brother, and I wouldn't leave a phone number for them, wouldn't give no address to them. Didn't they? and wondered so many times when I came back around and I hugged my, uh, uh, my old mama up here at, uh, at a church house. She would just begin to cry a little bit. And she would just hug my neck and she'd say, Mike, when you was out on the street and I didn't know where you were, she said, I don't know how many times I cried myself to sleep begging the Lord uh, if he would send a little message your way if he said something uh, to cause you to maybe uh, think about says that the prayers of the righteous do availeth much. Yes, they do. Brother, and I thank God that He spared me over long enough. Yeah. Long enough that I could turn to my right mind just a little bit. Sometimes we think that we think that we know a whole lot in this life and we think that we our ways are wiser than the other. I have a 15 year old daughter now and no doubt I look at her and she already has it all figured out. If you want to know answers to anything in this life, you just go and ask her and she'll tell you just how it is. She's about as wise as I was back then. That's what this world is full of deceit. It's, you don't need to be aware of a great man with a pitchfork walking in here, toting around that you can say, avoid him, little children. Watch out for that man, but it's the little things. It's the little things that he's trying to steal from you and rob you. It's that little voice that says, do this. And it's that other one right behind it that says, no, you're scared. Don't put yourself out there. One time I was in a little church house and we had a preacher. And his wife had MS and they were going to renew their vows. And she had just been diagnosed just a little bit. And we all gathered in. We were going to surprise her and he was going to bring his wife in. And we were all sitting in our little church in Michigan. And we all gathered and we watched out the window as they pulled up. And, and, and everyone was just as happy as could be. And about five minutes rolled by. And, and everyone started chattering, wondering, well, what's going on? How come they haven't come in yet? And we watched her begin to turn the corner. And I guess she was having a real bad day. I had never even seen her like that. And she came in on her little walker. I'm brother, and she was just shaking. And she was trying to be as happy as she could. But you could feel a sense go over the crowd of everyone's heart. Just kind of saying. No one knew what to say. And a voice came to me. Just as clear as I could hear. And said, tell her how beautiful she was. And you know, fear moved in right behind.
for the Lord. Trying to be there for Him. Do His will. Guess what? He's trying to rob you. He says, stay in the bed. No use in going out. No use in trying. There's not enough people out today. Let's just go through the motions and go back home. He puts all these things in our way. He puts all these obstacles. He tries to hinder us as much as he can. But I got news. All we're doing is robbing ourselves. When I step out for the Lord, when I seek Him with everything that's in me, it only blesses my life. And I look at it and I say, what's wrong with you? Have you ever been down on your knees praying? Sometimes I'm just so bullheaded and I just won't do the will of God sometimes. And, but other times, brethren, when I'm feeling real beat up, I felt just as low as I could and I get down on my knees and I just begin to talk to the Lord. And I pour said to cast your cares upon me for I care for you today. God loves you more than your mother and father could ever even imagine because he's greater than any of them. One thing that I always tell my children is I may not always have the answers but look to God with everything in you and he won't steer you wrong. I'm going to trip and I'm going to stumble children but guess what? Look to God with everything that's in you. I truly believe that with all my heart. I'm thankful to get to be here. I don't want to take too much time from Brother Elisha. I've enjoyed being here. I hope that God has used me a little bit to maybe to make you think a little bit about your relationship between you and God. Today, the whole time that I was on my way here, all I kept thinking is I'm going to preach Gideon to him. I'm going to tell him all about Gideon and his great story. And when I was sitting here today, I thought, don't preach Gideon. <laughs> don't preach it to him. That's not where you need to go. But I'm thankful that if we look to God, he'll lead us a little bit. He knows better. And he knows just what we stand in need of. And I hope that he used me and that I let him use me today. And I love each and every one of you. Thank Come on, you. brother. Elijah.